I saw the movie October Sky when I was 10 years old, and I knew I wanted to design spaceships for NASA. I saw this young boy getting made fun of while he tried to build rockets and achieve his dream of becoming a NASA engineer. I related to this young boy. I was getting bullied too. And to see him persevere and achieve his dream showed me that I too could do that. At that very moment, space became insanely important to me. But back then, I had no idea just how important space is to each and every one of us. We see space every day. GPS, credit cards, long distance communication, weather forecasts. I mean, have you ever taken a selfie? Well, if not, we're gonna change that right now. Everybody smile. The image sensors in this camera comes from NASA technology. Have you ever flown on a plane? Winglets, the little turnips on the edge of airplane wings, come from NASA investigating ways to use less fuel to reduce emissions to combat climate change. Let's get a little bit more serious, though. Meet George Grace. George Grace lives in Buffalo, and he's an artist. George is also a cancer survivor. A story by Ivanhoe describes his use of a cancer treatment called photodynamic therapy, or PDT. It uses LED lights to activate cancer medication. Now this technology is aided from using LEDs to grow plants on the International Space Station. So George literally owes his life to being cancer-free, to space technology being brought down here on Earth. This technology to grow LED plants in space has also stemmed into acne treatments and wound healing. Let's take a look at a more grave example now. Meet jazz artists Clifford Brown and Richie Powell and Richie's wife, Nancy. In 1956, Nancy was driving the three of them overnight from Philadelphia to Chicago in a rainstorm. Unfortunately, Nancy lost control of the vehicle, went off the Pennsylvania Turnpike, tragically resulting in the loss of all three of their lives. Now, 10 years later, in 1966, NASA was looking at how to improve traction of airplanes landing on wet runways. And what they found is if you put these grooves in the runway, it improves the traction. This technology was then moved over into the freeways and our road systems, and we saw upwards of 85 to 98% reduction in freeway accidents. So that's not to say if this technology would have been around 10 years earlier that Clifford, Ritchie, and Nancy wouldn't have gotten in an accident. But that is to say that they would have had a lot better probability of not losing control in the first place. So we see space all over the place. Software that kept the space shuttle flying helps make cars safer and improves running shoes. Sensors to locate survivors after a disaster come from space-based sensors. Or earthquake shock absorbers in LA and Tokyo come from the dampering systems during space shuttle launches. So all of this stuff is great. Why am I here talking? What's the problem? Well, the problem is not many people know about this. Or if they do, they still don't choose space. I've had many experiences interacting with people who don't think space is necessary. And I want to share a few of those with you. In 2012, I got my first NASA internship. And I was excited. I had a family member ask me, what? NASA still exists? I thought the space shuttle went away. I was heartbroken. A member of my own family didn't know that my dream to become a NASA rocket scientist was even a possibility. NASA is so much more than the space shuttle. I was training in the gym for American Ninja Warrior with fellow ninjas, and when one of them found out what I did for a living, they asked me, what has the space industry ever done for me? After we just filmed him training on the phone. I'm like, the image sensors in the camera we just used. Do you ride or drive in cars? Do you use GPS? Do you use long distance communication? All of these things impacted their everyday life, and they were unaware. 
A few years ago, there was a rocket launch at dusk in LA that was the source of panic for a lot of family and friends. I got people texting me, sending me messages, what is this thing in the sky? Is this aliens? Are we under attack? What's happening? So I chuckled a little bit, where some of my colleagues got angry. They're like, how could someone be so ignorant? I said, no, this is an opportunity to educate. So I told them that it was a rocket launch, that the sun's light rays were still hitting the upper atmosphere, but it appeared dark on the surface. But what I loved about this moment was that people inquired. Right? They wanted to know what was going on. They reached out. And that's the first step for them, is curiosity. Now, a question that it seems that it's harder for people to answer is why should we give any money to NASA or the space industry when there are more important things going on? So let's look at that money first, but not in dollar signs, in percentages. On average recently, NASA receives 0.4% of the overall government budget. So that means there is 99.6% of the government budget remaining after NASA gets its little sliver. Now let's look at a dollar sign. So in 1976, there was a study done that showed for every $1 spent on the Apollo program, $14 returned to the US economy. It's a pretty good investment. So with more knowledge, we can make more informed decisions. We can know what's more important. The more things we know, the more we are aware of how our decisions and actions impact others around us. In 2002, Secretary of Defense Donald Rumsfeld talked about three types of knowledge. He said there are known knowns. There are things that we know we know. For example, I know that one plus one equals two. He also said that there are unknown knowns, the things that you know you don't know. Like, I know that there's brain surgery. I have no idea how to do brain surgery. And then he said that there are unknown unknowns. There are things that you don't know you don't know. So how do you figure that out? It's quite simple. You don't. You have no idea. That's why it's my job. It is our job to expose the unexposed, to make aware the impact of space. Maybe if people knew that enhanced solar technology and water recycling can combat our current global issues of climate change and fresh water. The way that our world's climate is changing is scary. And the mere lack of access to clean and fresh sustainable water is heartbreaking. I will never give up educating about space to try and change these things. And I'll tell you why. I stand on this stage now as a NASA rocket scientist. But the journey wasn't easy. It's taken a long time for me to get here. It took me three years and over 150 applications before I got my first NASA internship. Then I applied to Georgia Tech. And Georgia Tech rejected my application to graduate school. However, a few weeks later, I was given a graduate research assistantship, which paid for all of my tuition and gave me a stipend to do research. So next, I set my sights on NASA JPL. I went through three rounds of interviews, only to receive a call that I had not been given a full-time job. So at this point, I was two weeks away from graduation. I graduated without a full-time job, but took a 10-week internship with JPL to prove to them that I belonged. Over the course of that time, I set up 30 interviews for myself. And on the last day of my internship, I received word that I would get a full-time job offer. So as you can see, I will never give up about space. We need to spread the space. We need to bring it into places it's not. I would like each and every one of you to bring space into your communities. Turn those unknowns into knowns. Bring up the awareness of space and its implications on everything so that we can make those more important decisions. Because literally without space, we die. So spread the space, save lives. Thank you.